Baik, kita dalam segmen ini kita nak beri fokus kepada analisis terkini ringgit Malaysia melihat kepada faktor-faktor utama dalam implikasi dan implikasi terhadap persuasi mata wang dan izinkan saya berbahasa Inggeris untuk temu bual ini um, saya mempersilakan tetamu kita Muhammad Sidik Jantan Head of Wealth Research UOB Kehian Wealth Advisor I want to say thank you very much uh, Sidik for joining us this morning maybe firstly maybe you can share with us how do you interpret the recent uptrend of the Malaysian ringgit against the US dollar? What are the key factors contributing to this trend and how sustainable do you believe it is in the near future? Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please proceed. Okay, yeah, uh, our fo my focus is for the ringgit uh, will be let's uh, continue to be strengthened uh, for the year 2024. And uh, as I mentioned in the my previous uh, commentary uh, in the newspaper, that's uh, the first quarter is already let's uh, achieve. That's uh, what we are, what we forecast at the 4.70 uh, uh, per USD. And it will be let's continue to be let's uh, strengthen in the quarter two. That's uh, we look at about at 4.5. Uh, 5 to 4.50 uh, per USD and in the second half year 2024 as we expect that the Federal Reserve may cut the interest rate uh, it will be like uh, strengthen our Malaysia ringgit uh, for the quarter three is about like 4.5 to 4.4 8 uh, per USD in quarter 3 and in quarter 4 it will be like uh, 4.45 uh, per USD however I want to like uh, highlight uh, for the this week and also let's like, say the whole like uh, first quarter uh, even though that's a, we see that's a Malaysia ringgit uh, at the 4.68 uh, uh, as of today but it may have uh, like uh, some of the like uh, uh, downside uh, due to the like the, the, the demands and also let's like, say uh, the trade in the US and also let's like, uh, China we see that uh, the uh, the the currency will be like maintained uh, for the quarter three quarter one at the uh, around four point seven zero. But on the quarter two, we we see that the uh, the depreciations of the ringgit to uh, uh, to be like uh, reduced. Uh, uh, ringgit will be like the increase to the four point and five five to four point zero. Uh, this uh, number is uh, derived from the like uh, trade data. Uh, as you guys, uh, as we all know that uh, the the uh, the the what we call it said the the trade uh, the request for the uh, CPO futures last week it has been like say increase despite for the uh, ringgit uh, as we know that the uh, CPO futures uh, contract is been like a trade in the Malaysia ringgit so this is a one of the factor of the last week the ringgit have been like strengthened. All right, Sidi. Okay, uh, next one, maybe you can say how significant is uh, Bank Negara Malaysia decision to maintain the OPR uh, at 3%? What implication does this decision have on the ringgit's performance, particularly in comparison to the US dollar? Today, can you hear me? Baik. Kita tengah ada masalah teknikal dan kita tengah cuba untuk dapatkan semula tetamu kita, Encik Sidik. Baik, lepas ni kita akan ada tunjukkan visual. Kita sebenarnya tengah menunggu untuk tunjukkan visual Menteri Pendidikan Fahlia Sidik yang mengadakan lawatan kerja sempena pembukaan sesi persekolahan akademik 2024-2025 di Sekolah Sarjana Putra SP4 Kuala Langat. Dan selepas ini kita beliau akan mengadakan sidang media. Kita masih menunggu iaitu ucapan daripada beliau dan kita masih lagi menunggu untuk update. Baik, okey. Seperti yang difahamkan, uh, tetamu kita sudah kembali dalam talian. Dalam talian. Mr. Siddiq, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Alright, uh, probably I'm going to uh, repeat my question. Uh, maybe you can share with us how significant is BNM decision to maintain the OPR at 3%. What implications does this, this, this decision have on the ringgit's performance, particularly in the comparison of the US dollars? Okay, uh, from my view, that uh, the decision for the uh, Bank Negara, uh, the MPC uh, committee, is quite like uh, aligned where that uh, we see if let's say that we in, we uh, the, the the central bank have, uh, need to increase, uh, need need to decrease, uh, decrease the uh, uh, what we call that uh, the 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 
the interest rate, it will be like the uh, give the impact to the our uh, financial uh, stability. But if all, if let's say that so we want they want to increase the uh, uh, the uh, the interest rate uh, from the three percent to the three point two five, it will give the spillover effect to the consumer. Uh, and also, let's say the business owner. So I can say that uh, uh, it will be like to uh, maintain for the interest rate will be like uh, uh, for the at the three percent uh, for the whole year 2024, and it may have a like uh, uh, maybe like a uh, one height uh, in the future in the 2025. So that's a uh, uh, basically like the uh, I can say that uh, regardless that the the interest rate uh, set by the bank uh, need to be like the uh, uh, increase or decrease. It may give a very less significant uh, impact uh, to the uh, economy because it's a uh, uh, from my data first that's a uh, we see uh, on the uh, central bank around the regions uh, in Asia is already let's like, uh, back to the pre pandemic level and on the economy, which is a. Uh, it will be give a significant impact if let's say that the economy is not doing well and the government and try, the central bank try to increase the interest rate it will be like the impact on the uh, numbers of the government policy uh, that's are going to be executed this year we have the new energy transformation plans all right we're going to continue our discussion on the ringgit trend what are the factors and the impact I'm going to still welcome our guest uh, back is Encik Mohamed Sidik Jantan, the head of Wolf Research UOB Kehian, Wolf Advisor. I want to say uh, thank you very much Encik Sidik uh, for staying with us. Uh, maybe next one you can share. Uh, what about the Minister of Finance too? Datuk Sri Ami Hamza as well as Bank Negara have said that Ringgit is undervalued given our strong economic data. What specific economic uh, we can say indicators and factors uh, contribute to this assessment? And how do we determine the fair value of the ringgit relative to its fundamentals and prospects? Okay, uh, regarding about what uh, our uh, finance minister and also that said uh, the governor say that's uh, the undervalue of the Malaysia ringgit. Uh, basically, that's uh, what we see that uh, whether or not the uh, economic indicator uh, or the let's like, variables is be like the support of the strengthens of the economy or uh, uh, vice versa. But if let's say we see on the economic indicator, like for example, there's uh, uh, we have the uh, leading indicator. It's a bit like uh, show improvement zero point three percent, which is uh, on the December. Uh, this is a show that's the uptrend after the 10 months uh, uh, of the let's say, drop. And also that's we see the unemployment index. Uh, the latest data have been shown that's the uh, unemployment rate at the 3.3%, which is uh, at the lowest uh, levels uh, since the pandemic. And also that we have the uh, inflation, which is uh, something like the uh, quite uh, stable. Uh, what I can say that's uh, the headline inflation is about as a 1.5 and also let's a core inflation at the 1.8. But uh, one thing that's I want to highlight that uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, ringgit have let's like, uh, undervalue and also let like, the whether or not that uh, 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 the 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 the, the step take by the the, the action take by the governments uh, or the uh, central banks specifically uh, to maintain the interest rate is it is it have in terms of the like the uh, uh, economy uh, I would like to let's like, share on the let's like, say the loan growth of the uh, 2024 we forecast that the, the business loan growth will be let's like, continue uh, uptrend at the five percent for the this year. Uh, Based on the let's like, last year, it's been let's like, say doing well. The consumer loan have been let's like, say improved at the six point one percent year on year in the two thousand twenty three, and consumer uh, the loan application is been let's like, say improved. Uh, around 30.1 percent so it showed that uh, the people still have the let's like, affordability and the business especially have a letter uh, I can say that's a uh, have a let's like, a number of the order is need to be fulfilled and hence that they, they need to apply for the let's like, loan uh, from the uh, bank so I can say that the undervalue of the uh, ringgits and uh, also let's like, say uh, whether or not that's a uh, uh, this ringgit can be let's like, say uh, strengthen in the future my answer is a yes it's a real let's say a strengthens and i can say that's a, a like I, like i mentioned just now that uh for the this year 2024 we uh at the uobk here wave advisor we target uh we forecast for the ringgit to be like a 4.45 and in the year 2025 it can be like say, it's not impossible to be reached at the 4. 10, uh, because uh, we need to look on the, the, the monetary policy that, and also let's like, a fiscal policy. That's a one of it that's been like, announced last year uh, during the budget is uh, the Financial Responsibility Act, 
where that said the government try to achieve because that said the, uh, when we see that said the financial responsibility act I mean, let's say announced uh, early of this year uh, during the budget 2024 uh, that's a said there's a government's uh, uh, what we call that said the uh, want to uh, reduce the deficit to the three percent and if let's say that said the deficit is managed to uh, hit at the three percent level which is a take took about like say, three to five years and i can say that sir it's not impossible for the Malaysian ringgit to reach at the four ringgit per usd but i can say that's about the short term for the for the this year is a 4.45 for the 2025 if let's say that's the economy have been let's say doing well not just malaysia but also let's say china because that's the correlation of the Malaysian ringgit it will be like quite close to the china china yen and it will be let's say about 4.2 uh, to 4.1 but if let's say that's a uh, the government policy uh, under the FRA managed to let's say set the deficit, managed to achieve the deficit uh, uh, from the budget at the four at the three percent, it's no impossible for the Malaysian ringgit to reach at the uh, four ringgit by two thousand twenty six. All right. Um... To see that, the engagement strategies employed by Bank Negara Malaysia to encourage continuous inflows into the foreign exchange market. What measures are being taken or should be taken to enhance investors' confidence in the ringgit and attract foreign investment into Malaysia? Oh, sorry, Mr. Siddiq, we have two minutes, please. Okay, uh, basically, so when we talk about the like, uh, uh, what to enhance the strengths of the uh, ringgit, uh, it needs to be like so the pro growth, pro growth economic policy is, is, is the key for the uh, government to attract uh, more foreign investor to be like uh, come to Malaysia. But I would like to en enhance, even though that's a uh, the report have been like say, show that the uh, foreign investor have been like say, increased uh, last year, but and also let's like, create the uh, number of the employ uh, what you call job opportunity however that said the number of the job opportunity for the skilled worker is still as like, low and if let's say that so we want to like exit from the middle 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 trap uh, income issue that so we need to be like so increase the number of the job opportunities specifically for the uh, what you call that so the, the 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 skilled worker and this will be increase our that so the uh, first that so will be reduced for the gd coefficient meaning to say that so we can see that so the the uh, the what you call that so the equality uh, among of the let's like, so demographics in malaysia that's a second that's a increase the purchasing for purchasing power among of the malaysians and also that's a this thing i can say is can be uh i mean that's a uh, achieve because that's a, we also have the uh, minimum wage policy and also that's a uh, under the padu is give us uh, direct uh, targeted subsidy that's reduced the number of the uh, waste uh, of the government money to uh, for the unnecessary subsidy to the uh, 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 overall uh, populations all right, I want to say uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sidik Jantan, for that sharing of uh, what's next for Ringgit and what it's to be expected. I want to say thank you very much to Mr. Sid Mohamed Sidik Jantan, the Head of Wealth Research UOB, Kehian Wealth Advisor.